It is so wonderful to be joined today by writer, political analyst, Earl Afari Hutchinson. So nice to have you here, sir. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. In terms of race and equality, have there been any, how, are we progressing at all? You know, Marie, I get that question a lot. Um, and it's always, are we going forward, standing still, or going backwards? So, I mean, obviously, as a country, we're not where we were, say, in 1970. I mean, obviously, we don't have legal segregation anymore. Obviously, we don't have, you know, the Jim Crow and all those barriers then. And the good thing is we've seen so much progress in terms of economic uplift from so many that have been dispossessed over time, particularly African-Americans, Hispanics, and other people of color. I mean, that's the half uh, full part, but then we got to be realistic. There is a half empty part, too. Certainly the last three or four years in this country, when we see the rise of white nationalism, white supremacy, when we see the violence, we see the polarization that's there, uh, when we see by every standard more poor people now, all the statistics and surveys have shown, you know, poverty has grown to such a point. We're in LA now. I mean, when you drive down some of the streets, they look like Calcutta. You, you have this side by side. You have much progress that's been made, but you have so much that actually has taken a step backward. You have been um, a strong voice in Black Lives Matter for a while, well, but what mistakes uh, should we avoid and what things should we do to demonstrate that there is an amount of compassion and caring and awareness now that maybe we didn't have before. Something to be honest with you, Maria, I never thought in my life I would see, and I stopped one day, there were about 10,000 people. They were marching, Black Lives, you mentioned Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm looking and I'm thinking, I don't see any African Americans. The overwhelming 95% were young whites. But also, even more importantly, the income. I mean, we're not talking, we're talking about some probably sons and daughters of very well-to-do people. Now, they're all marching under these huge banners, Black Lives Matter. All of them had these t-shirts on, you know, with the fist, Black Lives Matter. And I'm saying, now, if you had told me that a year ago, I said, you're nuts. I got a straight jacket to measure you for. It ain't going to happen. Right. But it did happen, and it is happening. So. Young people are now feeling, many young people are feeling, look, life of black life or a person of color's life has oftentimes meant very little. Now we're on your side. We're marching on your behalf. We're going to take some of the heat. We got it. That's a good thing when you see that. But having said that, what happens when COVID passes and you don't have time anymore? You're back in school. You follow me on this, you're back in school, you're back at work again, you're back with the partying again, with the social events, you're back in the fraternities and sororities, you're back in that life. Will you be back out there again? Or is it just a trendy kind of thing? I'd like to think it isn't. Right. But, and I'll leave it with the but. <laughs> really honored to have had this time with you. I certainly hope that People hear, read, and listen to what you say because it's an incredibly important thing. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I want to thank you for having me in Channel 35. I appreciate that. Absolutely.